Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Mr. S and today I'm going to be showing you my 2024 knife collection update video. So stick around because it's coming up next on Randomadry on YouTube. <laughs> So first, let's start out with the folding knives. Our first folding knife here is a recent acquisition. This is the Coast LX272 folder. I got it in a two-pack knife, knife set at Canadian Tire on a sale price of $15. And if you've seen my review and unboxing and first impressions on these two knives, you'd then know that they're not really that great and they're definitely not even worth the sale price. But I kept this one because it seemed to be the better out of the two. Takes an okay edge, liner lock, very lightweight, just kind of a good cheapy throwaway folder. Moving up next, this one was also purchased at Canadian Tire a while ago. And I tend to pick these up from Canadian Tire whenever I lose one or need one because they always go on sale for around 20 bucks out of the original $54 sale price or so around there. It's a folding knife with a liner lock and I'm happy to say that this one actually has taken a very sharp edge. I've took the liberty of sharpening most of my knives with my WorkSharp Precision Adjust Sharpening System. Nice lightweight folder, good for light work, and it is a bit more expensive than the Coast folding knife. but. It is kind of another throwaway knife. If it gets busted up or lost, it's not the end of the world. Moving on now to something that I definitely would not consider a throwaway knife. This is my Spyderco Tenacious. For years I looked at Spyderco knives and thought, mm, they're kind of ugly. I don't really want one. But I've heard so many good things about it that about a year ago now, I purchased one for myself and uh, I was amazed with it. I love the quality, the fit and finish, especially the edge that comes on the knife from the package, from the factory. Incredibly razor sharp. And I have sharpened this also on my Precision Adjust Sharpener, and it took an amazing edge. It's lightweight, but it still has enough weight to it that it feels like something in your pocket that you would feel confident using it if you had to use it for a little heavier duty tasks. Definitely not a throwaway blade, but also def definitely not a very heavy duty knife either. Still, the Spyderco Tenacious is one of my favorites. Moving on now to something a little bit bigger. This is the Cold Steel Kudu Light. I purchased this at a uh, liquidation slash surplus store in Brantford, Ontario. And this is the first cold steel knife I've ever owned. It was very cheap. It wasn't any more than $20, but I would pay that again and again just in case this thing broke or got lost because it's a very large size folder in the hand but it's lightweight enough that it's not going to weigh you down and it takes an amazing amazing edge very very sharp I haven't really used it for a whole lot but uh, in case I need a larger folding knife that I don't mind uh, getting lost or broken the cold steel kudu light is one of my favorites for that type of thing moving up here this one I bought online. This is a right edge folding lockback stiletto. So it's not a switch blade. There's no button to press. It's not a flick knife. I can't just flick it open. It is a two hand opener with a lockback. So you open it up. And the reason why I bought it is because of the blade, how long the blade is and the general profile of it. I just thought it looked very menacing. Not that I carry this for any uh, uh, ill intent. But I just thought it'd be a cool piece to add to my collection. It was around $14 online, so very cheap. Stainless steel made in China, but uh, it takes a razor sharp edge. It's a good knife. And uh, it's just kind of fun to have in the collection as an example. But not really something I would depend my life on or even really carry on a regular basis. Moving on. Up next, another folding stiletto that I purchased from uh, an online surplus store. Let me be very clear right now, despite what this knife appears as, it is not an automatic switchblade knife. This button that you see in the handle is literally for decoration. I can press it all I want, as hard as I want, and it is not going to open the knife. It has these beautiful mother of pearl, or some people call it cracked ice handle skills. 
It is an assisted opening knife. However, those are legal to own in Canada, but to my understanding, they are not legal to carry or import into the country anymore. I purchased this before the importation ban was put in place, and I do not carry it. It's just a nice little piece to have in my collection. It doesn't take a very good edge, because it is really, at the end of the day, a novel novelty piece. But I've always kind of been fascinated with the greasers of the 1950s movies, like Rebel Without a Cause or The Wild Ones, so I wanted to get something that emulated a switchblade without actually buying what would be in Canada an illegal switchblade. <clears throat> Moving on here, I have some vintage knives. Vintage and one antique. So, first up is this vintage Leatherman multi-tool. To my knowledge, this is one of the older original Leatherman models. And I received this from a friend for helping him for a day with some laborious tasks. And uh, I've had it since then. It does have a bit of wear and tear on it. Um, it is not in perfect condition. As you can see, the handles do not line up very properly. And the tips on the pliers have been obviously grinded down on a bench grinder. Somebody tried to make them more narrow. Like I said, it's, it's really not in great condition, but I don't really carry it. I keep it because it is a vintage piece. The main blade has seemingly been attempted to be sharpened on a bench grinder, which whoever did that obviously wasn't a very good idea. It is a serrated blade and a straight edge. I would have preferred just a single straight edge blade. I'm not gonna take every tool out all the way, but it has a couple of flathead screwdrivers, a pair of folding scissors. And then on the other side, it has a metal or wood file with this diamond coated surface, which appears to be used for sharpening fish hooks. Also on board is a, yeah, a can opener, a Phillips head driver, and a very small, kind of like an eyeglass screwdriver. So I've kept it. I don't really carry it. I have a much newer, much better multi-tool that I do carry. I just keep this because it's vintage and I like <coughs> having it in my collection. Moving on now, this is actually what I believe to be an, an antique piece. Antique meaning close to or even a hundred years old. This is a very, very old Sheffield, England made pocket knife with what I assume is genuine bone or genuine uh, ivory handle scales. I tested these by heating up, where is it, right here, no, those are the tweezers. I tested these handle scales by heating up the metal toothpick, which after all these years is still part of the knife, and then by heating it up and sticking it into it, it did not melt or go through, which lets me know that these are not plastic handles. I'm not sure if they're ivory, I'm not sure if they're bone, but I'm surprised this knife is still in such good of condition for its age. It's similar to a Swiss Army knife. It has a bail on it. It has tweezers and a toothpick. I'm not going to open a lot of these tools because despite my best, best efforts to oil them and free them, some of them are quite stiff. It has a corkscrew on this side here. And on the other side, it has this kind of like a tri-edged metal spike or a punch or an awl. Funny story. I have a small cut on my finger here, and that's because I tried opening up this metal punch here. I've never sharpened it at all, but it is, it is so sharp after all these years that it cut my finger very cleanly, almost like a paper cut. So this isn't really something I carry because of how old it is, but I keep it as a sentimental keepsake. A dear friend did give me this and entrust this into my care. Some of the tools I will show you though are the main blade which as you can see has been sharpened many, many times over the course of its possibly 100 year life. On the other side of that blade, it has a smaller pen blade. Over here, it has what appears to be a flathead driver with maybe some file teeth down here. And the one tool that I can't seem to figure out what it does, It's very stiff to get out is this one here it's got bevels along the edge of it 
which makes me think maybe it's used for penetrating something. Maybe it's an antique can opener. It has this stem part sticking up here, and it's got kind of a leaf shape to it, but it's not sharp in a way that it's, it's like a knife blade. So if anybody knows what this little tool is on this very old pocket knife, please feel free to let me know. I'd love to know what it is and what it's for. Moving on here. Oh. Moving on here, another vintage knife also given to me by that same friend who gave me the Sheffield England pocket knife. This is what I'm assuming is a vintage Ireland made fish knife. It's got these yellow plastic scales which are a little loose so once again I don't really carry this all that much. It's more of a sentimental keepsake. It has a main blade with a straight edge on it which I have sharpened on my work sharp system and it took a fairly good edge, good enough to be used for general work. The tang stamp on this one might be hard to see, but it reads Stag Ireland. To my knowledge, these knives were considered very cheap back in the day and were most likely sold a, you know, a penny or 25 cents. It also has a fish scaler and a bottle opener here. I do have Irish ancestry, and I really like having a knife that was made in Ireland in my collection. Moving on here, probably my favorite of my vintage knives. Just have to get it out of the binder. This is a vintage Camp King pocket knife. I did some digging around on the internet and YouTube, and thanks to another individual's channel, I'm so sorry right now, I forgot the name of your channel, but mark my words, I will look it up and I will put your channel name into this video just to give you uh, props for helping me date this specific knife. This uh, Camp Cane here was most likely made between 1946 and 1951. It does have some patina on it, but really not a whole lot of rust, and with the exception of the missing bale, all the tools are still there in practically perfect condition. It has a main blade, which is very, very sharp. It has a can opener. It has a bottle cap lifter with a flathead screwdriver. And on the opposite of that, it has an awl. In my opinion, this is the perfect setup for me for my type of needs for a traditional pocket knife. I don't need multiple blades, I just need one knife blade, a can opener, a bottle cap lifter with a flathead driver, and an awl. I really like this and it's carbon steel throughout by the way. Moving on here, we have two more knives in the folding knife collection. In this brown Leatherman sheath is not a Leatherman knife, but in fact a browning folding knife. This is the Browning 111C. It's similar in idea to the Buck 112 in that it has a shorter, stubbier blade and whatnot, but at the same time it's incredibly different from the Buck 112. I actually had a Buck 112, but I prefer this one over it. I like that the blade is wider and it has a deeper belly to it, and I like that the finger grooves fit very well in my hand. It's of a lockback design. It features a Sandvik 12C27 stainless steel blade, and it's very, very sharp. One of my preferred carry knives when I want something more heavy duty on my belt. Moving on here, probably the most important folding knife in my collection due to family history is this 50th anniversary edition Buck 110. My mother, as a birthday gift to me, purchased this for me in 2013 or 2014 as a birthday gift to me as a rite of passage of when I left childhood and started becoming a man. The sheath has a little bit of wear and tear on it but is still in very good condition. The knife inside features the old style of the diamond wood grips as opposed to the new natural ebony grips that Buck uses. This is your standard Buck 110 model. The brass is a little tarnished but that's easy enough to clean up with some polishing compound. It has the straight blade with the standard handle, no finger grooves. And on the tang stamp, you can clearly see it says 50th anniversary edition, Buck 110 USA. 
I consider this one of my favorite, most special knives in my collection. And I don't carry this anymore because I've had it for this long. It was a gift from my mother. And if it got lost, I'd be absolutely heartbroken. So that just stays in the collection. In the future, I do, however, plan to buy a Buck 112 with the older style diamond wood. Pretty sure it's the diamond wood handle scales. But we'll see about that. Nothing's for certain at this moment. Moving on in what you could consider our folding knife category is my multi-tool, the one I actually do carry on a regular basis. This multi-tool was made by Mossy Oak and I got it on Amazon for maybe 40 bucks at the most, but it's been incredibly good to me. The sheath is a little cheap and leaves much to be desired, but inside you get a quality heavyweight multi-tool with more tools than you could ever need on it. And in the pouch, of the sheath, you get double-ended driving bits because this multi-tool features a modular screwdriver attachment that locks at the half stop and full stop position. You simply put your bits in there as you would see either side, whatever you need, and you have a, a plethora of screwdriver bits. Also on this multi-tool is a main blade with a straight edge, which I like to see, because I prefer straight edges. They're more utilitarian to me than serrations. It has a three inch measuring tool on here with the other side being a wood and metal file. Down here are file teeth. On the opposite side, it features a fully serrated blade, good for cutting through zip ties, rope, or fibrous objects. It also features a wood saw, which I have used and it actually works quite well. Other tools on board of it include a bottle cap opener with a flathead screwdriver, a awl or punch with a hole through it, which I've been led to believe can be used for sewing, and a can opener with a small flathead on it. And then of course, the main feature of any plier-based multi-tool is obviously the pliers. These are spring-loaded. They feature your finer needle nose at the top, your standards in the middle, and at the very end, an actual functional set of wire cutters that really do come all the way together for clean wire cutting. I'm happy I bought this multi-tool because it was so much cheaper than a Leatherman or a Gerber, yet it featured double the amount of tools you would normally get for an even better price. And having used it extensively now, I can honestly say that the quality, besides the sheath, is quite good. Moving on now, let's look at the fixed blades. So now, let's move on to the fixed blade knives, or really any of the knives I have in my collection that aren't kitchen knives that do not fold. Starting out, just gonna take these at random, this is a Milwaukee, Milwaukee, however you say that, forgive me, I'm not from Wisconsin. Uh, this is a duct and insulation work knife, and I got this at Home Depot for about $35 to $40. Now, the sheath leaves much to be desired. It's just cheap plastic, and it's quite difficult to get the knife out of there. <clears throat> you got to be careful doing it. Um, the knife itself, being a ductwork and insulation knife, features a serrated edge on the top and a fine edge on the bottom. Now this isn't a knife that is really for tactical or hunting applications, it's a tool. It's a tool used in the skilled trades. But the reason why I bought it from Home Depot is because it was a fair price to pay and it looks solid enough. The blade still, to me, is a mystery. I've heard it's D2 still, I've heard it's AUS8 still, I'm not sure. What I do know of is that it takes a razor hair splitting edge and I've actually taken this to my friend's house where we posted up in the backyard for a martial arts uh, hangout day if you will and we were using this as a throwing knife into a wooden stump and despite the tip taking on a very slight bend it held up perfectly fine. This is one tough knife, and if I had no other option, I wouldn't mind taking this with me into a survival situation.
Up next is a fillet knife. Now this fillet knife was given to me by the same friend who gave me the vintage Ireland fish knife and the antique Sheffield pocket knife. This was brand new in the package when he gave it to me and he looked at it and said, eh, it's not rare, it's not worth anything, you can have it. And you know, I tend to agree with that. It's, it was kind of more of a just a mass produced fishing knife that he didn't want anymore. Now when I did take it out of the package, the ed edge was incredibly dull. So I took it upon myself to sharpen it. And I can tell you now, there's a concrete dust in there because I, I drilled a, a screw into a concrete wall to hang these up and it's kind of dusty. I should have cleaned that. But uh, yeah, I took the liberty of sharpening this to an actual usable edge for flaying fish and it is very, very sharp now. It's not the greatest quality. There is a little bit of rattling, a little bit of movement going on with the handle and blade. But for flaying fish, this will probably work just fine. Moving up from there, a couple of machetes here. This right here is a vintage FD diamond machete that would have been made in China back in the day. Not cheap modern China mass produced, but more so vintage China made for the agricultural sector. Now where I got this was from the backyard of somebody's house. They had hired me to clean the house of its uh, stuff, you know, furniture, uh, personal belongings, what have you, because the previous owner had died and they just wanted everything thrown out. So they hired me and a couple other guys to do it. And this machete was found in the backyard and amongst the entire plethora of kitchen knives found in the house, I was allowed to keep it. The sheath I made myself out of cardboard and tape because it did not have a sheath. It is carbon steel as you can tell, despite my best efforts to clean it and consistently oil it, it does take on a bit of a patina. Now I have modified this in a bit in a way that I would like it to be if I was using it in a chopping competition. So I did some file work on the spine of the blade. I also filed down about this two and a half, three inch section of the blade here to a dull point, not sharp. That way if I'm swinging it, there's just a little extra space there that might not bite into my arm the same way the, the very sharp edge of it would. It does take a pretty decent edge if sharpened in the right way. Um, this definitely won't fit in the precision adjust sharpener. So that's fine because I just sharpen it freehand. Moving on from there, another machete. This is a, well, it's a Gavilan de Incolma, Colombia. Forgive me if I totally butchered that pronunciation, but this is a Colombian made machete. It's carbon steel with a true full tang and a genuine leather sheath. The sheath was made in India, but the machete itself was made in Colombia, in South America. It is carbon steel, I have treated it with oil, uh, three in one oil to preserve the blade. And I also did some modification to it in the form of staining the handles a darker color and wrapping it with this hockey grip tape. This machete does take a very, very sharp edge and hands down is the best machete I've ever owned, even outdoing the vintage FD diamond. So I got this one on the Amazon, paid about 50 bucks for it, and you know what, it was worth it. Much better than a $12 Coleman machete from Walmart. Those things are junk. All right, moving on here, another fillet knife. This is a J. Martini Finland Rapala fillet knife. I got this at Canadian Tire. Now, I'm not really much of a fisherman, but if somebody gives me a fillet knife, me being a knife collector, I certainly won't turn it down. But I purchased this one on my own uh, dime because I wanted a knife that I could use for whittling and wood carving, but I also wanted something that didn't have a tiny little one inch blade on it. So I got this at Canadian Tire and I have used it for many wood carving and whittling sessions and it works great. I did sharpen this on my work sharp precision adjust and it took a razor hair splitting edge. Overall just a good little knife for wood carving or flaying fish, whatever you want to do with it. Just nothing too heavy. Moving on here, 
And you're going to notice a common trend here. A lot of these knives are from Canadian Tire. That's where I get most of them, uh, especially when they go on sale. This is a Hunt Shield uh, Canadian Outdoorsman knife or Canadian belt knife. Essentially, bonded leather sheath, very cheap sheath, button snap retention strap. This is essentially a knockoff, cheapo copy of the Grauman. I think it's the number three or number four boat or belt knife. Now at the moment I cannot afford a genuine Grauman, but it is on my list to get one. But this is a pretty decent placeholder right now. It is true full tang with rosewood handles. A little bit of jimping up here on the spine. And uh, this particular one came out of the package fairly sharp, but I did sharpen it myself with my work sharp. And uh, it took a very, very sharp edge. So. Just a little Canadian belt knife design. Still have yet to get a genuine Grauman. We'll see if that comes to fruition in the future. Moving up here, another Canadian tire knife. This is the Smith & Wesson HRT boot knife. Now, in Canada, you're not allowed to carry a knife concealed, so I do not and would not recommend putting this in your boot under your pant leg you could face a fine or uh, being arrested but just as something interesting to have in my collection not necessarily to carry um, I got this it has a leather sheath which the knife blade did poke out of that's why this tape is here another reason why I don't really carry it it has this clip which if you're in a permissible environment you could clip onto your belt or your boot button snap retention strap and it has a double-edged dagger blade uh, I did sand all of the old black um, coating off of here because I just wanted the plain steel blade. So that's my little modification to it. So it was cheap. It was about oh, $34.99 at Canadian Tire. Just a little cool item to have in my collection when uh, I want to feel like I'm a ninja or something. But I don't carry it. It's not worth getting in trouble for it. Here's another knife also purchased at Canadian Tire. This is the Hunt Shield EPX Lewis fixed blade knife and is one of my most favorite fixed blades in my collection. Black leather sheath, belt loop, button snap, retention strap. Has this beautiful trailing point blade. Takes a very sharp edge, true full tang. As you can see there, and it has these beautiful multicolored blue and black G10 handle scales with a lanyard hole down here. Now I have reviewed this on my channel, a full review of it, so check it out if you wish to. Um, really, this is just a hunting knife in my opinion, although I can see it being used to some capacity or another as maybe a fillet knife, although the blade's a little thick for that. Really, just another knife I wanted to have in my collection more so for its looks. But the quality is there if I had to use it as a camp knife. So, not really a bad knife, but not really hands down a super fantastic one either. But definitely better than some others, such as this little m -Tech knife I have here that I've had since I started collecting knives when I was 18. So, what can I say about it? it? I paid $10 for it, brand new on Amazon years and years ago. Uh, cheap nylon sheath, which has been through its share of hell and back. At one point I had Velcroed this to my workbench. Not doing that anymore. Currently, I hang it off my workbench via a little nail and this zip tie. So this is just like a cheap, full, um, a cheap fixed blade for beating up and doing what I got to do with. I made a new retention strap from it via the leather portion from another knife. And let me tell you, I have a video on my channel talking all about this, but to put it short, this thing has been through hell and back. And just recently I sharpened it with my work sharp and for the first time in its life, it actually has a sharp edge on it. So there's that one. Moving up here. This is one of the oldest knives in my collection. Not oldest as in terms of when it was made, but oldest as in uh, how long I, I've personally had it for. So this is a Buck 120 General. Uh, 
you know, made in the USA, classic buck knife. I have owned the 119 uh, special in the past. I've actually owned a couple of them at one point. Uh, but as of recently, I don't have a 119, but I do have my 120. Now this isn't something I particularly carry anymore because it's really hard where I am in Canada to find the 120. You can get them on Amazon, but they're quite expensive. So I've had this one for all these years. It has a bit of a longer blade than the 119. This one has been sharpened many times, but uh, I'm here to tell you it is finally sharp. Um, what more can I say? It's just a classic fixed blade knife, good for camp work, good for hunting larger game, whatever you want to do with it. Moving on here, another uh, classic knife that most people should recognize, the K-Bar. This is the K-Bar single mark. Um, I wanted to have a K-Bar. I had one in the past with the US Marine Corps logo on it, but uh, my thinking has changed. I never served in the military. I wish I could have, but I never have. Um, so I didn't feel it was fitting for me to have a US Marine K-Bar. So I saw this one, which has no military markings of any kind. And I've done a few modifications to it. I have this strip of leather cordage here, which I've put through the land, uh, drainage hole in the bottom, and I use it to tie onto my leg. And then the blade also has had some modifications. So I have sharpened the back portion of the clip point to not a razor's edge, but sharp enough that it could cut you. I also ground in right here, a relief choil for sharpening. And I have sharpened it myself to a very, very sharp edge. And just through use and whatever, the blade has become a little roughed up, but all in all, still a very good knife. Not something I particularly carry. I am not a wealthy person. I don't have the money to just go out and buy a new $185 K-Bar knife whenever I want. So that's something that I more or less cherish in my collection than actually use. But moving on to something that I do use, also from Canadian Tire, this is the Hunt Shield uh, Forge Northern Heritage AP fixed blade knife, something like that. And I've modified it a bit. So first of all, um, I did put a cross on here. Um, I am of the Chris Christian faith, so that's my cross. And on the back, I just uh, I put my name on there. So. There's that. It includes a small ferro rod down in the sheath, which isn't the greatest, but in a pinch it could work for you. I did have to stretch out the retention strap a bit because I modified the knife in a certain way. So I attempted to grind the spine to a 90 degree angle so I could strike the ferro rod, but it just, even my grinder couldn't really do it that well. So this is fairly tough steel, I guess, or hard steel. I did grind in a choil down here for sharpening. I sharpened the main blade. I stained the wood handles with varathane just to darken them. And then I wrapped the handle with twine and then soaked the twine in super glue just for a really coarse, rough grip that's not gonna go anywhere out of my hand. It does cause some hand fatigue though, but I would rather be able to hold on to my knife uncomfortably than lose my knife comfortably. So that's that. Moving up here, we have the Mossy Oak Wood Buoy. So I have modified this as you would have seen on my channel. I put in these engravings into the sheath just to give it a kind of like a fish skill or alligator skin design. And then on the back, I wrote Redemption uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I've gone through some personal redemption in my own real life. And I also bought this knife because I love playing the video game Red Dead Redemption 2 and I wanted a knife that was somewhat similar or as similar as I could get it to Arthur Morgan's knife in the game. This was the closest I could find. So I have modified it. It used to have two retention straps around the handle. I got rid of the top one, just kept the bottom. I engraved the handle scales and stained them with varathane and I also took it to my grinder and remove the finger grooves out of the handle. The blade, 
used to have a mossy oak logo on it, but I sanded and polished the blade until all of that marking was gone. And I did sharpen it, and despite it being a cheap $32.99 blade, it does take a very good edge. I have tested it on my channel, and you know what? It holds on to that edge fairly well. It's definitely not the greatest, but it's also really not garbage either. Okay, moving up here. Uh, this is really the one and only tomahawk, if you could call it that, in my collection, right here. So, the axe head <clears throat> and the sheath came off of a hatchet that I got at Canadian Tire a couple years ago, but when I went to test it, the axe handle broke. I went to a thrift store and found a four or five foot long wooden dowel, which I eventually cut down and used to make various things out of, including a handle for this. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. As you can see here, the wood doesn't completely fill up the eye of the axe head, but I did my best to put it in there. And for right now, it seems to work. Uh, I engraved my initials on here. Um, but I'm really not going to try and show those too much because, you know, my private life. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of just a placeholder for a tomahawk that I can get right now until I get uh, an actual tomahawk with a proper hickory handle. Now, it did occur to me that I did leave out a couple of folding knives here, if you could call them that. Now, these aren't anything special. This is just a Husky brand folding utility knife with a deck of replacement blades. Like I said, literally nothing special, but I wanted a more higher quality utility knife in my collection, and this one with its metal handles and lock back caught my eye. And then lastly from there, again, not really a knife that you would carry. Um, this is just a straight razor. Uh, before we had disposable Bic razors and Gillette, you know, Fusion Glide bullshit. Uh, even before we had double-edged safety razors, which is what I shave with in real life, uh, men shaved with these. These were single-edge, reusable straight razors that you would actually have to sharpen and hone on a regular basis. Well, you would have it sharpened about once a year, but you would strop it and hone it on a regular basis. Now, do I shave with this? Absolutely not. I tried to in the past and I cut myself and that just wasn't fun. But uh, I do have a straight razor in my collection because I think it's pretty cool. And finally, last but not least, the last fixed blade knife in my collection is by far the most expensive and treasured one. And that is this one right here. If I can get this all the way in the frame. So, this is my custom-made replica of the Rob Zombie Halloween 2 knife that would have been used by Michael Myers. Um, I saw the movie, I saw the knife, and I said, I have to have this. I searched all over the internet, couldn't find anything that looked close to it except for one, which was sold out of the States. Uh, they only accepted orders within the States, and the model was actually discontinued so I reached out to a knife maker via Instagram in Alberta who goes by Locust Forge and by the way I have a full length review of this knife on my channel feel free to check it out but I reached out to Locust Forge and provided him with pictures dimensions and specifications of what I wanted and together him doing the labor me providing the idea of it this knife came out of it it cost me $400 and Locust Forge was a very nice guy to work with the, to have it built. Um, if I had the money to have another custom blade made, I would definitely go back and have him make me one. Uh, but this is the one I do have. So it has a tooling leather sheath. I've added this uh, nylon webbing belt on here as a way to carry it if I had to, but not that I do. It has a button snap retention strap. It is a full W2, full tang carbon steel blade with this detailed filing and scalloping on the top. With a detailed ornate cross guard and black Macassar ebony 
handle skills. It's a big knife, but despite its size, it's uh, really not all that heavy. And if I had to count on one blade out of all of mine, this is the one I'm going with in a battle against uh, the Devil Horde or demons or whatever it be that come as a threat to my safety. If I had to go up against battle with them, this is the blade I'm bringing. So, there you go guys. That is my knife collection video for 2024. Uh, a lot of the knives in here, if you are within my region of Canada, you can most likely get at Canadian Tire. However, some of the knives in my collection are vintage or antique, or in the case of this, custom made. And you're not going to be able to find them anywhere else, or you'd be hard pressed to find them anywhere else. Now I just want to add one final thing here, because I know this video is quite long. But the way I see it, knives are art. They're uh, different designs, different colors, different patterns and price points. And uh, I view knives as pieces of art, rather they be actual functional blades or dull display pieces. And in a practical aspect, I, I view knives as tools, not weapons. If you start collecting or buying knives with the intention in your head that you're some sort of tough guy and you're going to go out and raise hell and stab people to look cool or whatever it be, please stay away from knives and weapons in general. The knives in my collection are well maintained and are kept within a safe environment in a safe lockbox. Uh, they are not weapons and I have no wish to harm anybody. So I guess the point here is whatever you do, make sure it's legal and do it in a safe way. Having said that, that's my video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.